What's up everybody, this is Ryan here, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the steps necessary to prepare, upload, and publish an Android application to the Google Play Store. Here's what you'll need in order to follow along with this tutorial. A developer account with Google Play, an Android application with a unique package name, and I'll be using Android Studio IDE version 3.5.2 here. I do strongly recommend you use version 3 or higher. Also, please note that I will be focusing on the technical process of preparing, signing, uploading, and publishing an alpha test version of the application as well as a full release. In other words, I won't be going into much detail on store presence, SEO, and that kind of thing which really warrants its own tutorial. Now, there's a lot of different steps, so if you want a list of topics and timestamps, check the description box down below and hit that like button while you're down there. In the first part of this tutorial, we'll look at preparing an app for upload to Google Play. This involves enabling R8, or ProGuard, on earlier versions of Android Studio for code minification. Then we'll create a key store and a signing key. And finally, we will create a signed app bundle, or APK. More on that later. Every Android application has a package ID located in its Android manifest file. The purpose of this package ID is to allow platforms like Google Play to uniquely identify your app. This ID must be unique, and every APK that you upload to update a given application on the Google Play Store must have the same package ID, otherwise you will have to re-upload a completely new application and you will lose all of your ratings and installs. Until quite recently, we used a tool called ProGuard to shrink and obfuscate our code before uploading it to the Play Store. Obfuscation means to change the names of the classes, fields, and functions of the application into shorter, obscure versions. This will help to make your application smaller, and it will also make it more difficult to reverse engineer your code, but by no means does it make that process impossible. R8 will do lots of other kinds of optimizations, like removing unused code, which will result in a smaller APK file, which makes everybody happy. Now, this is slightly confusing, but assuming you're using a recent version of Android Studio, it now uses R8 instead of ProGuard. To enable R8 or ProGuard in older versions of the Android Gradle plugin, add minify enabled equals true to your build configuration. Note that while R8 is different from ProGuard, it is still capable of interpreting any ProGuard rules that you add to the ProGuardRules.pro file, which sits in your module level app directory. I don't have time to go into detail on adding specific rules to this file here, but the good news is that most popular libraries which are added to your application as Gradle dependencies will supply their own rules that get merged automatically. The Android Gradle plugin will also generate a lot of common rules for you. In any case, it is very important to test your application with minify enabled set to true. You can do this either by specifying that option in your debug build configuration, and as we'll see later through alpha testing in the Google Play console. After you have configured code minification and assuming your application is now building properly, the next step is to create a key store. A key store is just a simple file which stores encrypted keys or certificates for released builds of your application. Once you have set it up, you will digitally sign your APKs and app bundles with it. Please note that in this tutorial I will be uploading an app bundle instead of an APK. In any case, both must be signed, so the process is very similar either way. Also a bit of good news here, all of this can be done through Android Studio following a series of prompts which we will go through now. Within Android Studio, select Build, Generate Sign Bundle, or APK. I recommend you select Android App Bundle and then click Next. Assuming you don't already have a key store created, hit Create New. The key store path specifies the path or location and also the name of the key store file which you'll be creating. I recommend you click on the folder icon. So creating a folder called key store at the root of C drive and naming it key store is not a great idea. I'm just doing that for demo purposes here, but you'll probably want to do something a little more secure than that. Anyways, once you've found a location and given the file a name, you can go ahead and click OK. Now, in case you're kind of wondering why we have two different passwords and confirmation boxes here, what's going on is that the first password is for the key store itself, which can store a collection of keys. And then down below this key bar thingy here, we can actually specify a specific key within the key store, which will need its own password. And the alias will essentially be the key of the key, or the name of the key, if we're thinking like name value pairs, key value pairs. 
Now, I'm not sure if this is actually deliberate or it's just a bug, but in recent versions of Android Studio, when I've created these keys, for some reason the field to enter the validity is not visible at all. Just understand that, at least for me, it is defaulted to 25, and if I click the up arrow, it is now on 26. If for some reason you expect to be managing your application for longer than 25 years, then go ahead and increment that up a whole bunch. As for the certificate, don't worry too much if you're just like an indie developer, just input what you think is correct and that should be fine. Once you've got everything you want, go ahead and click OK. Now before you proceed, I highly recommend you select the Export Encrypted Key for enrolling published apps in Google Play App Signing. In fact, this step is mandatory if you want to upload an app bundle to Google Play. Also take note of where that key will be exported to. You can skip this step if you're not interested in Google Play app signing or you're uploading an APK file, but I still really recommend it. Once that's done, hit Next. Ensure that your release build type is selected, and then you can go ahead and hit Finish to generate the app bundle. One final point before we hop into Google Play. When you want to update your application, be sure to increment the version code, otherwise Google Play will reject your bundle or APK, and you'll have to go through the process of generating it all over again. If everything went smoothly, you should now have either a signed app bundle or a signed APK. In this part of the tutorial, we will set up app signing by Google Play, create an alpha release for closed testing of the application, upload the bundle or APK, and finally we'll upgrade our alpha release to a production release. Go ahead and log into the Google Play Developer Console. If you haven't already, from the All Applications tab, select Create Application. Like I mentioned before, I'm not going to go into great detail on filling out the information in the Store Presence page, but you will need to do that before you proceed. Just follow the prompts and Google Play will tell you what you require. The next thing we'll do is set up App Signing by Google Play. This step is mandatory if you are uploading an app bundle, but I recommend it either way. How it works is that the key which your app is ultimately signed with will be stored in Google's servers instead of your key store. You will still need to sign your app bundles and APKs with an upload key, but if you lose that key or it becomes compromised, you can request a new one from support. In the navigation drawer in the Google Play console, select Release Management and then App Signing. Then select Upload a Key Exported from Android Studio. This will of course be the exported key which you created when you signed your application previously. Once you've done that, go ahead and click Finish. One other note on app signing by Google Play, once you have everything set up, don't forget that from this page you can access your public SHA-1 certificate fingerprint, and this is important if you use Google services and Firebase and stuff like that. Anyways, go ahead and click on app releases. Each track here represents a different kind of release for your app. Production is the full release, which will be publicly available in Google Play. Beta represents open testing and Alpha represents closed testing, which is what I recommend for starters and what we'll do next. Go ahead and click on the Manage button for the appropriate track. If you want to allow specific users to test your app before it becomes publicly available, and I do strongly recommend you do that, click the Manage Testers drop-down button and create a list of emails for anyone who you want to test your app. Now, in this case, I have a release which hasn't been rolled out. Uh, for you, if you don't, it will say Create Release. Either way, go ahead and hit that button. At this point, we can finally upload our app bundle or APK, so go ahead and hit the Browse Files button to locate it, or just click and drag it into this box here. If everything went well, you should see either your app bundle or your APK down here. Go ahead and give it an appropriate release name and specify what's new in the application. After that, hit Save. If you manage to save it successfully, go ahead and click Review. Now, chances are you'll have some warning messages up in this area here, so you'll probably want to address those before proceeding. Once you've reviewed the release, you can go down here and go ahead and click Start Rollout to Alpha once you're ready. Once you've done that, after waiting anywhere from a few minutes to like an entire day, your app should be downloadable for your alpha testers. Now, if I recall correctly, Google Play will email your test users once the application does become visible, if I'm wrong about that, then you can go ahead and copy the opt-in URL and just email them with that. Now, like I said before, it can take many hours for Google to process your alpha release, so just be aware that the opt-in link might not be active for quite some time. Once you've sufficiently tested your application, you can go ahead and click Release to Production. And the process is basically the same as when we set up our alpha release, so I'm not actually going to go over it again. 
That's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, check out the pinned comment down below for more links to awesome learning resources. Thanks for watching.